Hello, welcome to Yates Makes. Here's what we're aiming for today. Charcoal drawings of a wolf's head or face. So I'm joined by my youngest. She's just turned 11. She's going to be drawing alongside of me. Lovely to have someone to draw with. So here's what you're going to need. Some A3 drawing paper, some hairspray, charcoal and a rubber. In the description below is a link to the photograph to, uh, we used as a reference. So first step, with your charcoal, draw a line straight down the middle of your page. Yeah, we're drawing from a symmetrical source picture. So that line of symmetry is really gonna help. Now flip your page around and again draw a line halfway. Okay, so you should now have a cross that fairly accurately splits your page into quarters. Now in that bottom quarter, along the center line, I have marked off roughly points at thirds. On that bottom third, I've drawn a little oval. And if you're looking at the source picture, you'll see that's where the nose is gonna go. Now reaching right up to the top of your page, just a few centimeters in from the corner, top left and top right, put two little marks and track some lines down to the outside edge of the nose. Okay, or what's gonna be the nose. All right, all of these are construction lines. The best thing about charcoal is it's so easy to remove. You can just smudge it away with your fingers and add your correction. Okay, we're gonna be putting a lot of charcoal down so all of this is going to get covered up and disappear. This is why I love charcoal. It can just be really messy, not care too much. It's an exercise, yeah? And drawing on this scale is really good for your skills. Right, about a third of the way down that top half, okay? So I'm only looking at the top half of the page now. Down the centre line, I've marked a third point and then angled down to the edge of the page a quarter of the way down from the top of the page or halfway down the top half I've done a couple of marks and done some lines now at the points where they cross some lines going down to about a quarter of the way up from the bottom of the page I hope all of this is making sense so far a couple more marks on the bottom of the page look okay so measure in about a quarter from either corner and you'll see we're just joining up so this is the rough proportions of the head now we're going to position the eyes so I'm going to track up from the outside edge of the nose or the shape that's going to be the nose to faint vertical lines sketch the ears on again look at the source photo as well as look at what myself and my daughter are doing okay do not worry too much if things don't go down in the right place you can easily rub them out with your fingers okay zooming in a bit we're now going to try and be a bit more precise and really look at the shapes and details of the eyes okay two dots for the pupils quite big and then that sort of teardrop or tear duct shape that is really dark fur okay underneath those pupils just drawing rings for the edge of the iris blocking in i'm looking carefully at that source photo just trying to block in a bit heavier with the charcoal some of these really black tones Okay, moving on, we can have a look at the nose. So, a line across, it's not flat, it's a very shallow kind of flat arc. Mark on some nostrils, and then the shape of the mouth or the, the muzzle. Okay, so that's a kind of like flat W shape with a very flat curve underneath. 
and you can see at the moment we're just sketching out basics now with my charcoal flat so I'm not using the end now I'm gonna start I'm gonna actually blur my vision while I look at the photograph we're working from just so I can see a bit clearer the tonal areas so really squint through your eyes and try and work out where the darkest parts are and where the lightest parts are and use the flat of the charcoal just to sketch in very roughly where you've got some long hair coming down from the sides of the face use that charcoal on its edge and kind of draw in the direction that the fur is growing okay that's going to get you into the idea of where you're going to need some longer marks to kind of describe that fur all right so just working your way around again if it helps look at the source photo and just squint your eyes a little bit so your vision's blurred and you see the tones a little clearer again using the flat charcoal but using it in the direction that the fur is growing okay starting to build up now you know drawing on this scale is so great because you'll notice we're using our whole arms quite often our wrists and fingers are locked it's just so good for building up confidence with drawing okay next little trick you might have a blending stump which will be really useful if not just roll a bit of tissue into a fine point and now we're just going to smudge back some of that tonal work we've done again try and smudge always in the direction the fur is growing as you look at that source picture okay all of these little marks and directions are going to help create a bit of volume and form okay if we think about always working in the direction the fur is growing Right, now that we've smudged back that first layer of tone, go back in with the charcoal, use the sharp end of it, and see if you can draw in some of the fur texture. Again, really take note of the direction that fur is growing in. In some areas, like the area I'm working on at the moment, the fur is quite short, so you're gonna to need to do short lines. In other areas where the hair is much longer, you can kind of let loose a bit and draw much longer, like here, gestural lines. Okay, you can see how that base layer of tone is just sitting underneath as a guide as you work in more and more texture and heavier tones. You'll notice that we're both spinning our pages around a lot, sometimes working upside down, sometimes working with it on the side. Really good idea to get in the habit of that, just so you get access to different parts of your picture. But you get a fresh perspective, particularly when you flip your page upside down. Okay, you start to see perhaps things that need corrected in terms of proportion, symmetry looks a little different. A good tip always rotate so again building in layers here I've gone back in with more tone sharp end of the charcoal stick just to get some more tone and texture next thing we're going to try and do is use the rubber to see if we can rub out some areas to create a little more fur texture especially where the hair is long down on the sides of the face. Your rubber is gonna get really dirty really quickly. So have a spare bit of paper just to clean it up on. Okay, so you can see my daughter there using the rubber just to get some areas a little cleaner, create that contrast she's looking for. 
Okay, rubber's filthy, probably needs a clean. So I'm just working in some more delicate textures and tones now, very light touch with the charcoal, trying to get a bit more volume on the, the nose, some of those more delicate details around the muzzle. Working into the hair on the side of the face, again building up in layers. I think very soon we're going to be ready to add a layer of hairspray just to kind of fix what we've done and then come back with a fresh set of eyes and just see where we might need some more highlight or we might need to go a bit heavier so definitely much heavier down the side of the face there you'll see from looking at the, the source photo almost like frames the face that very very dark area down each side okay Bit more work on the nose don't want to overcook it all right it's a charcoal drawing keeping it nice and loose and expressive is much better i think okay photos are for complete realism we want our drawings to kind of live and breathe a little, uh, a little bit as well I mean the ears are a really good example of where well, you're not going to need that much detail if you get up close to these they look a bit of a mess truth be told but you know the main focus is going to be the center of the face the eyes and it'll work out from there so you can be really quite loose and expressive right pop to the garden bit of hairspray put some fix down and then what i'm naming for now is to really go heavy where I've got my darkest darkest areas and clean up my lightest areas with the rubber maybe even use a white chalk as well okay so I'm trying to create a bit of contrast really putting that layer of fix down or the hairspray just means when you go over with your your darker tones it's a bit more stable you're going to build up a bit more depth to those darkest areas. All right, just helping my daughter now with a few finishing touches. Just trying to get things a little more symmetrical, reveal a bit more of that, the white of the eye, or you know the the colour in the iris. So just use a rubber to try and lift out some of that charcoal. We might go back in right at the end and do some fine tuning on those. But very much on the home straight now. 
nearly there. Like I said before, you don't want to overcook it. Okay, zooming right in on those eyes. Just going to try and clean them up a little, add a little highlight. For that I'm doing with the white chalk. They're really going to be a focal point. So if I'm going to put attention to detail and try and get a bit more realism anywhere, it's going to be on the eyes. So a little sparkle reflection there. A bit heavier tone. And again, onto this eye. Got a little correction to do underneath the eye there. That's better, much more round in the pupil. Drop a highlight in, bingo, we're done. Okay, really, really enjoyable exercise. Lovely to use charcoal, lovely to work on a bigger scale and really lovely to work with my youngest who, yeah, she loves drawing. Great that so young, she's so, so willing to get into charcoal and more expressive, messy stuff. Right, have a go yourselves. Good luck with it. See you soon.